You just don't put them in a box yet. Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes for folks to jump on. And we're going to talk about these guys really quick. I'm going to share our link to Facebook. Hmm? No. If you guys hear stuff in the background, it's just Miss Deborah working to package my club kit. Although I, you probably won't be able to hear her very much because I do have my headset in. Do -do. Go ahead and hop on. Tell me where you're from, where you're visiting from. We're going to make a shutter card today, and I have to tell you, you should all get a little giggle out of this. As I was typing up um, shutter card, I accidentally typed an I instead of a U, and I was like, well, that would be interesting. <laughs> I'm sure people would love to uh, see that. So anyway, it gave me a bit of a giggle. Thought it might give you one too. Okay, got everything shared to the Facebook land, and I'm ready to start crafting. Hi, Diana, nice to see you here. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about each of these sets and why I have them all out on my table and why I'm using bits and pieces from these. Um, these are the sets that we're going to be using for the fall paper party. So we're using the Little Delights stamp set. We're using Heartfelt Wishes. And we're using Words of Cheer. So this is the bundle that we're using. So I'm using these sets today to create this card for you. And I want to tell you there is a link below the video that you can go to to sign up for the paper party. And today is the last day. I'm going to be invoicing people tonight for the paper party. So you just go to the link below the video, click it, sign up for the option you want, and then um, you'll get a PayPal invoice from me later tonight, um, letting you know how much you need to pay. And then you pay your PayPal invoice by August 2nd, and then you're in. And if you don't know what a paper party is, it's basically a paper share, which means you get one quarter of a pack from each of the designer series paper in the new catalog. Oh, I'm going to move my, my station over here a little bit. Um, so the new catalog is releasing on August 3rd and there's a bunch of designer series paper in there. So you will receive a quarter of a pack of each of those papers plus card kits for each one. In fact, one of the card kits you're going to get, we're going to do right here today so that you can see what it's like. And this is one of my favorite cards for the paper party. So um, let's get started making our card. And I can talk more about the paper party and answer any questions you have about the paper party while I am making this card. So please just chat in your questions if you have any. Hey, Bev. Hey, Julie. Good to see you guys here. All right. So we're going to start out with a regular old eight and a half by five and a half piece of white card stock. This is your card base and I'm going to fold it in half. And I want to apologize for my fingernails. You guys, I really need to get them done. They are horrendous. I'm debating taking them off and not having acrylics again anymore and just painting them myself because I seem to not be able to get myself together to go to the place to get them done. You know, you know the score. Okay, so then you have a second piece of cardstock that is cut at five and a quarter by eight and a half. And this is the insert piece that we're going to use. So 
you're going to score, <coughs> excuse me, on the portrait side, which is this side, at one and seven eighths and three and three eighths. So we're going to score it at one and seven eighths. Uh oh, look what I have done. How in the world did I manage such a thing? It's like my my blade is coming half out of my track here. Oh, there we go. I don't know how I did that. Okay, one and seven eighths, three eighths. And if you struggle with measurements, I actually have a video. It's old, but I have a video on my YouTube channel telling you how to read measurements on a ruler. Believe it or not, a lot of people struggle with that. Uh, two and an eighth. So now we're going on the landscape side and we're going to score it two and an eighth. And you don't have to remember this because I made you guys a graphic that is going to show you exactly what to do and how to do it. And you don't have to worry your pretty little head about it. So we're going to go six and a quarter. I think that's, I got to, I can't, I don't want to put my head into the I go six and three eighths. So I think it's about there. All right. Now we have to do a special score line. We're going to score at in between here at one inch, the one inch mark. We're going to go all the way down to this score line here. And we're going to score down to this score line here. So we're kind of just doing, we're just scoring at this little in-between guy. So we're doing it at one inch and at seven and a half inches. So these cards are super simple to make. Don't be like freaked out about how much scoring is happening. Again, I promise I'm going to do a graphic. You guys will have it so you can print it like I did last week. Um, okay. And then we have to cut. So we're going to cut from, so I'm going to line it back up with the one and seven eighths. And we're going to cut from this one inch score line up here that we did in the center all the way down to the seven and a half. So the cool thing about the Stampin' Up! trimmers is they have these little arrows on each side of the blade. So, and they there's a ruler here. So I can line this arrow up with this one inch mark, bring it down to the seven and a half inch mark, and I've got a perfect cut. And then we'll go to three and three eighths inch and do exactly the same thing. So I'm looking for the one inch scoring all the way down or cutting all the way down to the seven and a half. Ta-da! Okay. Now that we have all of our scoring done, we're going to fold. So let me see. Oh, I have to remember how to do this now. So this part, wait a minute. Let me think about it. Okay, this part goes in. So you're going to do um, valley, peak, and valleys. So we got a valley, a peak, a valley. And then on this guy, it's going to go up and down and in. Yeah. So we got a peak or a valley, a peak, a valley, a peak, a valley. So when you fold it all up, come on, you stinker. There we go. Folds up like this. Okay. So I'm going to put it up on end so you can see. So all of this, smush it together and it will go flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our base and we're going to take a really strong adhesive. You can use whatever adhesive suits your fancy, um, tear and tape, stamp and seal plus. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a really strong adhesive. Okay. And just for those of you who might struggle with stamp and seal plus, if you do, um, one of things that I have learned and found is um, I was pushing way too hard. Uh-oh, is the sound gone? Can you guys hear me? Uh-oh, 
Tell me if you can hear me. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep going and then tell me if you can no longer hear me. So then I'm gonna line this up. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this center little tabby piece that's sticking out doesn't go past my card, right? Like you don't want it to be, here's your closed card. You don't want it to be sticking out over here. So you're just gonna line it up like that and then we're gonna add adhesive to this side. Isn't this card going to be fun? You guys are going to get this card kit if you're part of the paper party. This is one of your card kits. So you're going to, I think you guys are really going to enjoy making this card. So there you go. So there's your little pop-up insert, just like that. And now you just have to decorate. So we'll start with the front because that's the easiest thing to do. Um, I've got a piece of four by five and a quarter card stock here, or, um, sorry, designer paper. And this is that super cute, sweet stockings designer series paper again, available August 3rd, um, to purchase. So there's that. Oh, well, welcome Karen. First time catching me live. That's awesome. And then we have this piece that's going to go on. And this is die cut. Now you will have some different die cut pieces. Um, like for your the paper party, this piece might be a solid piece. Um, or you you can choose to cut it out of designer series paper with your own, but it might be a different shape. So just know that this card is not necessarily the exact same as the card kit, but it's gonna be really close. Okay, and then we've got our designer papers that are gonna go. Now these are cut at one and five eighths by two inches. And by the way, I want to tell you guys, today is the, um, not the last day, good grief. We're almost done with the, the designer series paper cell. So right now you can get 15% off. Pretty good amount of the designer series paper. If you go to my online store, there's a link below the, the video. Um, the designer series paper cell will pop right up on your screen. If you go to shoploveandstampin.com and there you'll be able to shop for some of the papers like nine dollars for a 12 by 12 pack so that's pretty cool so anyway if you need designer series paper it is a great time to buy it having a little bit of a time with this here so these are going to go in the center you need two of these these ones are cut at one and a quarter by one and seven eighths. Okay, and then we'll do a little side pieces. These are cut at three and a quarter. No, good Lord. Three fourths of an inch. So three fourths of an inch by one and a quarter. So those will go like that. And then we're going to do our stamping. So um, we've got, wait a minute. What did I do wrong? I cut extra pieces, I think. That's okay. Okay, so we got four pieces here. Oh, I know. Never mind. Never mind. I didn't do anything wrong. Brain fart. Okay, so we're going to use old olive and we're going to use this fun little leaf image. It'll go like this. 
get him out of the way. And then we're going to do this guy. And then we're going to use a scrap for stamping off because I want this part to be lighter. And I'm not worrying about stamping it exactly. I'm just putting a little bit of color in there. If that makes sense. Okay, and then we've got this cute little I think I need a new cherry cobbler ink pad. I have re-inked this stinking thing and it is just giving me fits y'all. So we're going to start in the middle because I'm going to stamp three. One, yeah, see it should be darker than that for as much reinker as I have put in it. It's just not, I don't know, something's going on with it. My dang cherry cobbler. Okay, and then I have a sentiment for the inside. Really trying to ink that up there. And then we're gonna glue all these pieces inside. Oh, I have too many. <laughs> we'll just use four. Yeah. Okay. So there's one. We'll put him down here. Now, the other card that I made, like this, I used all the little animals from the Sweet Stockings bundle. But I wanted to show you some of the cute stuff that was in these other stamp sets, some of the cute images. And really, this whole pop-up thing is so fun that you don't have to have super elaborate, crazy imagery to, it's got a wow factor just because it's got all the fun folds, if that makes sense. So you can keep the rest of it fairly simple and just enjoy the process of making these. Now, I made a bunch of these for a swap and then I thought you know what this would make a really fabulous card for paper party so that's how we ended up with it okay and then we're going to stamp the sentiment for the front wishing you a joyful Christmas which will go here but before we add that we will add our ribbon, which I'm going, oh, I'm gonna put just a little bit of adhesive right here to hold that ribbon on. And then we'll tie our bow, which you know I hate doing on camera, if you've watched me for any length of time. I'm not even gonna bother trimming it up because I'm gonna open it up so you guys can see the inside. And then we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals, three for good measure. And then add that here. Cute, right? So then watch when you untie it, it opens up and you have this fun card on the inside. Isn't that cute? Miss Deborah is very excited about it. She's here in the office today. Her normal day for, to work for me is Wednesday, but we wanted to get our club out in the mail to you guys um, today. So hopefully we're going to get it done. She's been working really hard on it while I've been doing other stuff. Um, so that's it. That's the card for today. Super cute. So you don't have to do much with the front because the inside is where your wow factor is at, right? So just keep it simple on the front. Don't stress. And then on the inside, you have this really cool wow factor. And let me show you the other – nope, that's not them. Of course, it would be the last one I would grab. There they are. Let me show you the one with all the animals because it's so stinking cute, you guys. 
So this is for my swap. And it says Santa Paws is coming to town. Undo it. You see here I added embellishments. And then look. With all the little animals colored. Miss Deborah is trying to hold her squeals in. So, yes. So there was that one. And then this is another one I made for a swap. Isn't that cute? So stinking cute. In fact, I think we're going to make this one next week on YouTube. So we'll be making that one next week. Um, but yeah, that's that, guys. Lots going on here in the old office. Um, packing for the club. Making swaps to get in the mail, uh, which have to go in the mail, like, soon. So um, I'm going to try to get those wrapped up tonight so it can just be something checked off my st stressor list. list. Um, and I've got to design all the cards for the paper party. I haven't actually designed them all yet. And I have to, what else do I have to do? I have to design for August Club. And yeah, just lots of. Lots of things, lots of irons in the fire, lots of stuff happening, but I'll get it all done. I always do. I always do. I always do. Anyone have any questions for me? Love those cards. Thank you. <coughs> Linda said she can't wait to get her kit. I'm just reading back through some of the comments from you guys. Reminds me of my brothers and I dressing up our puppies. Our daughter loved to dress up our golden. Aw. I had a golden retriever when I was a kid. It was really the family dog. And his name was Rusty. And I do have a picture of me with him where I put him in a sweater. And he was a huge dog. And he had a ton of hair. And I'm sure he is probably thinking, like, why? Why, woman? What are you trying to do to me? How is construction, Bev asks. It is done-ish. Um, there is one more um, thing that has to be done, which is our, our shower needs to be finished grouting, and then they need to install the glass on our shower and my daughter's shower. And then, um, Oh, Julie said she was confused when she, when I was showing what the cutter does, I can show you again. So, um, that all needs to be done. And then, um, they called today and said they're coming tomorrow with the counter. So the counters on our sinks are finished, but there's this area where the shower like meets to go to make the counter and they cut it wrong. So they're coming tomorrow to fix that. Um, and then hopefully later this week we will get our glass installed. Um, yeah. So basically the deal is the glass, the hinges, the glass is done. The glass is ready, but the hinges that go on the glass and the handles are back ordered. So like everything else in this country right now and probably all over the world, there's all these back order things. And so we're just part of the group that gets to sit and wait for, for stuff to come in because the pandemic really has thrown everybody cattywampus. So we're just going to be patient. We're trying. We're trying very hard to be patient. I do have family coming to visit from out of state next week. And I was really hoping our showers would be finished. So hopefully by Friday of this week, they will be completed. Um, I'm really, 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 really hoping for that. Um, so anyway, that's what's happening with the construction. Thank you for asking. So close to spa time. <laughs> Um, I know. Let's see. Okay, so let me show you the trimmer again so you can see what I'm talking about. 
By the way, you guys, FYI, you see how the red dyes my photopolymer stamps? This is something I get questions about quite often. It's supposed to do that. Um, if you have photopolymer stamps that don't dye with like red inks, they're actually not a very good quality. I know that sounds really weird, but it's true. Um, the higher quality your photopolymer is, the more it will stain. So it's normal that it stains. It's literally not a big deal. They work perfect. They don't transfer the ink color. Once you've cleaned them, they are clean and you're not going to get this. It's not going to be like pink on anything else, just so you know. Okay, let's get this one cleaned off. This is a Stampin' Scrubber. It's my very favorite. Um, I, I know lots of people use like the little chamois and stuff. I don't really, I don't really care for them. I prefer the scrubber. You can purchase the Stampin' Mist and you just spray it in one side. And there's these little droplets that show you that this is the wet side. And then this side, um, oh, thank you. That is so sweet. Oh my Lord. Um, I, I want to say your name correctly. Inika. She said, please don't forget to hit the button below the video. It really helps Wendy. And she is right. When you give me like thumbs up, when you subscribe, when you hit the little bell to remember that I'm lot, you know, when I have a new video out, anything you do to interact, it really helps um, my videos and it helps my YouTube channel. So that is so sweet that she said that. I thank you for that. So um, I'm really bad about telling people and saying that myself. So anyway, stamp and mist, you spray one wet side, dry side, scrub off your stamp here, dry it off over here. Most wonderful thing in the world. I have four of these. I wash them in the sink, just run water over them, wash them, and then let them sit and dry and they're ready to use again. And I only have to wash them like, I don't know, every couple of weeks. It's not like I'm having to wash them daily. Um, okay. The other thing I was going to show you is on this trimmer, what you guys were asking about. So there is a ruler. It's hard to see, but there is a ruler on the bar right here. So if you're trying to do something like I just did with this card, and you need to score from one inch to six inches, or you need to cut from one inch to six inches. You put your paper in here and you can line, see this, this blade here, how it has like a little um, divot. That's your arrow. So you can line that divot up with the one inch score line and then score all the way down to like six inches. And same with the cutting blade. So if you need to cut in the middle of a piece of paper, that's what this is designed for. So you would just lift up your bar, put your paper in, shut it down. And let's say you want to cut from two inches to four inches. Then you would give it a little push so it will poke through your paper. And you would cut from that two inch mark on the bar to the four inch mark. And then you can cut in the center of a piece of paper, if that makes sense. So, oh, that's a great tip, Sally. Sally says that she glued a quarter of an inch strip of white paper under this ruler part so that she could see the numbers really easy. So anyway, so that's how this trimmer works. It's really cool. Oh, some of you guys have stuff going on too. Um, bless your heart, Sally. She said she's got construction of her porch. It's a waiting game. And of course, the price of lumber has tripled. Yes. Yeah, it's a difficult time right now to be doing any sort of construction. <laughs> Very difficult. We kind of got in on the early end of this being a mess. So we're okay. Um, our job was pretty much finished before this got super crazy. Buddy, stop. Um, but yeah. So anyway, so yeah, that's it. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. My dogs are going crazy. 
Um, and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to go work on finishing up the blog post that has a graphic that has all the measurements for this. And then I want you to do me a big, big favor. If you will, if you have Pinterest, go to my blog and pin the graphic so that it gets put out there into the webosphere. All right. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye. Oh my.